Hey, you guys, it's your girl T. So I want to come on here and talk about this story, and it is coming from dreadful ass Detroit, Michigan. So a few people have been wanting me to cover this. It took place, it started about three months ago, and basically we have a young man. He's 22 years old. His name is James Lee Salt Marshall, and he was accused of basically killing his eight-month-old daughter and also sexually molesting and raping her, okay? So this caused a lot of controversy. There was a video of him that went viral where he just broke down in the courtroom. He was crying. He's always maintained his innocence. He's always said that, you know, he did not harm his daughter sexually. You know, he was going to sleep with his daughter at the motel. And basically, he accidentally rolled over his child. And he stood by that. His own mother was trying to throw him under the bus and saying that she didn't believe him. DFS was already involved in this case because him and his baby's mother, they've had issues. And the baby's mother had lost custody of both of her children. So the little girl was between his house and his mother's house. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch the initial court case and the initial charges Go ahead and check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. An Inkster father of an eight month old baby was emotional in court this afternoon. He's accused of sexually abusing and killing his daughter last week. Seven Action News reporter Aaron Baskerville is live in Inkster with more. Aaron. Stephen and Glenda, you said it. That 22 year old father was extremely emotional inside an Inkster courtroom behind me this afternoon. He's facing several charges, including felony murder, also first degree criminal sexual conduct. Police say his daughter died from head trauma. James Salt Marshall breaking down in an Inkster courtroom this afternoon, minutes before he faced a judge. The 22 year old father is accused of sexually assaulting and killing his eight month old baby, Janaya, last week. Investigators say it happened inside a hotel room on Michigan in Inkster. They say Salt Marshall has changed his story several times as to what happened to his daughter. At first, saying he fell asleep with her, woke up to use the bathroom, and when he came back, she would not wake up. But doctors tell detectives the trauma is consistent with sexual abuse. In court, he denied the charges as he couldn't hold back his emotions. Obviously, that 22-year-old father, very emotional. That went on for at least another minute or so inside the courtroom before he was taken out. His bond was set this afternoon. It was set for $2 million. For now, we're live in Inkster, Aaron Baskerville, 7 Action News. Aaron, did he say anything during his interview with police? Well, he told police, at least admitted to trying to saving his baby, his daughter, Janiah. We know that he called 911. Also, my one, excuse me, and also tried to do CPR on his child, but that didn't work. He also admitted to police that, you know, during this whole time, besides the CPR, he also tried other ways to wake up the baby, shaking her, which obviously we know that's not a good idea, according to investigators, but that didn't help as well. All right, Aaron. Thank you for the update. I saw that video, and like I said, that's the video that went viral. And since then, this young man has always maintained his innocence. And now, as of yesterday, it has been announced in Detroit that all the charges were dropped and that they're saying that he did not murder his child. He's now coming out saying that his life has literally been ruined by these claims of rape and murder. His attorney's very upset. But basically, they're saying that there was no evidence, there was no tearing of the baby's anus or any sexual, you know, misconduct whatsoever. And they're also saying that this is kind of common. This has happened to, you know, plenty of parents, unfortunately, who have rolled over on their children by accident. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this updated case and also check out what his mother had to say as well. Check this out and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Dropped against a local father who was facing life without parole in prison. This, this never happened. Okay. No, 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 no. One of the matters. Yes, sir. Now, James Salt Marshall is a free man. The charges of murder and sexual assault and the death of his own eight month old daughter now dropped. So, why is this suddenly being called an accidental death? And why doesn't his mother believe he's innocent? Seven investigator Jim Kirstner has new information on the stunning change. This all happened at this motel in Inkster back in April. The dad was alone in one of these rooms with his eight-month-old baby girl. They had rented the room for a week. 
Now, this baby was with the grandmother right before this. She says the state removed that baby, and she says bluntly tonight her son killed her deliberately. It's no accident. This is eight-month-old Janiah. The case now ruled an accidental death that James Saltmarshall was sleeping next to her. And when he woke up, the baby was unresponsive. The grandmother says no way, just an accident. Because she would get out of it. She was crawling and sitting up and vibrant and, and alive. The baby's mother, who's not been charged, lost custody of this baby and another three-year-old. She was staying with James at the motel when this happened, but he was alone with their daughter. Together, Bonnie and Clyde, I feel that they killed my grandbaby. When her 22-year-old son was charged in April, her mother says she had to watch this video a few times. I saw somebody who was crying for themselves. He was not crying for Janiya. The defense attorney in this case is Lillian Diallo. She tells me that doctors at Garden City Hospital and Children's Hospital in Detroit saw this baby right after the death, and they're the ones who got it wrong, indicating there was a sexual assault and there was trauma, indicating that this was a murder. Again, she says they got it wrong. She also says this case has been dismissed without prejudice, which means it could be, could be refiled. It Inkster, Jim Kurtzner, 7 Action News. All right, thank you, Jim. You can feel All right, so you guys just saw the updated case, and I just think this whole situation is extremely sad. Um, this man missed his daughter's funeral. He hasn't even had a chance to properly mourn. He's literally been in jail for the past few months. Um, he eventually was able to bond out. I don't know how I feel about his mother. You know, she is still looking at him like he's guilty. And maybe part of that is because she's hurt because her grandchild is dead. But I find it just really, really unnerving that she's so quick to distance herself from her son. And she's not happy at all about him getting off. You know, the sad thing about this situation is that because of this high profile, because of it going viral, and because in America you're found literally guilty until proven innocent, even though it should be the other way around, you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. That's never the case. And with social media, you know, this case blew up more than it needed to. And so he will always be remembered of the guy who was accused of molesting and murdering his eight-month-old baby, even though that wasn't the case. Another thing that bothers me with this situation is was the baby's uh, anal area torn? Was she molested or not? Like, I don't see how a forensics team and a doctor can say that this is what happened and use this in a court of law. And then once further digging is done, they're saying that there was nothing wrong with the baby. The baby had no physical bruises. And I know a lot of people want to say, well, it's still murder. He rolled over his child. Who rolls over their child? I had a friend back in high school. Him and his girlfriend, they were teen parents. They had the baby at like, I think the mother was like 15. He was like 17. And them not knowing any better because they're teen parents, they had the baby in the bed with them and they all went to sleep. They wake up in the morning, the baby's dead. And both are blaming each other for rolling over the baby. Anyways, long story short, they never got charged because it was accidental. They, neither one of them will say who rolled over the baby, but one of them rolled over the baby and that's how the baby died. And unfortunately, this happens a lot. That's why you should not sleep with a small baby in your bed without some type of like bedding or little bassinet or something there to prevent you from rolling over on the baby. That's why they say babies should always sleep in their own crib or their own separate area because this does happen. And I know two people who were extremely affected by this. You know, this changed their lives and, you know, it made the girl really bitter and crazy. So, I mean, the whole situation is really sad. I'm glad that he was found innocent, but this is a prime example of our legal system just leaving its victims in the wake of propaganda. You know, it's sad. Like I said, he was guilty before being proven innocent. And our legal system does this to people a lot and he really should realize how lucky he is. Because unfortunately, if they really wanted to be lazy and not really check behind the forensics team and the doctors and, you know, he's just a poor black man. It's not like he has really any money for a good attorney. 
they really could have just rolled with this case and gave this man life in prison and nobody would be the wiser. He'd be another one of those inmates locked up saying that I didn't do anything and nobody would believe him because he was already found guilty on social media. He was already found guilty by the news media. So they really could have ran with this and been like, you know what, we're not about to make ourselves look stupid, throw his ass away, one less black man on the streets. He can sit there and make license plates for the rest of his life and furniture and everything else. So he really should be thanking his lucky stars that somebody in the Detroit justice system did their due diligence and they went in and they researched and they really crossed their T's and dotted their I's and they were able to find this man not guilty. You know, so the whole situation is just crazy, but this does prove in certain cases the legal system does work and I'm just really glad that they found him innocent. You know, I feel like the mother's just upset and she's mourning her grandchild, but you know, from day one, he has been very adamant that he did not do this. I mean, just the tears, the way he was breaking down, something about him did seem a little bit believable, but the whole situation is sad. Now, I know some people are asking, can he still be charged with like second degree or involuntary manslaughter and, you know, stuff like that. Honestly, a lot of times in these baby rollover cases, they don't end up charging the parents because the parents, I mean, it, it's some shit that you take with you to your grave. This is something that burdens the parents for the rest of their lives. Like, my homeboy never got over that shit. His baby's mother never got over it. I mean, they ended up breaking up, you know, after that. But it really affected both of them. And he since went on to have a shitload of other kids. But, you know, he we you know he still thinks about that. You know, it's something that really affects the parent because no parent, you know, wants to hurt their child you know unless you're just a, a shitty parent or a horrible person and especially when it's something like that where you're just going to sleep and you're hoping to see your child the next day and then to wake up it, it's something very very traumatic people will never know it's something very very traumatic so a lot of times in those type of cases those rollover cases those accidental cases they don't charge the parents because it's something those parents it's a guilt that that parent will live with for the rest of their life I know two people who are still dealing with this situation. So, you know, like I said, I'm glad that he was found innocent, but this situation could have really taken a turn for the worse. So whoever did their due diligence there in Detroit, kudos to you, okay? Because a lot of people would have been lazy and been like, you know what, he's already viewed as guilty, so who cares? But they didn't do that. So I'm really glad to see this case turn around, and I'm really glad to see that this man was found not guilty. You know, the little girl was just beautiful, and it's just really sad that she, you know, passed in that manner. But unfortunately, this happens a lot more than people actually care to talk about. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire disturbing situation that's coming from dreadful ass Detroit, Michigan. Um, how do you guys feel about the case? Do you feel like, you know, he's innocent? How do you guys feel about the case? Do you side with the mother and what she's saying? Or do you feel like, you know what, he was found innocent, the mother needs to let it go? He needs to be allowed to grieve and start his life anew. And then how do you feel about how basically this man was made to look guilty before any of the proper evidence was actually really, you know, uh, researched and siphoned through? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces. It's your girl T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.